what ten people tell me to do So I guess I'll remain the same Otis Ray Redding, Jr. was born September 9, 1941, in Dawson, Georgia, died December 10, 1967, the fourth of six children, and the first son, of Otis Redding, Sr., and Fannie Mae Redding. He was an American singer, songwriter, record producer, arranger, and talent scout. At an early age, Redding sang in the Linneville Baptist Church Choir and learned guitar and piano. From age 10, he took drum and singing lessons. At Ballard Hudson High School, he sang in the school band. Every Sunday he earned $6 by performing gospel songs for Macon radio station Lib. His passion was singing, and he often cited Little Ricker and Sam Cooke as influences. Redding's breakthrough came in 1958 on disc Chucky Hamps Wayne's The Teenage Party, a talent contest at the local Roxy and Douglas Heaps. Johnny Jenkins, a locally prominent guitarist, was in the audience and, finding Redding's backing band lacking in musical skills, offered to accompany him. Redding sang Little Richard's Heebie-Jeebies. The combination enabled Redding to win Swain's talent contest for 15 consecutive weeks. The cash prize was $5. Jenkins later worked as lead guitarist and played with Redding during several later gigs. Redding was soon invited to replace Willie Jones as frontman of Pat T. Cake and the Mighty Panthers, featuring Johnny Jenkins. Redding was then hired by the Upsetters when Little Richard abandoned rock and roll in favor of gospel music. Redding was well paid, making about $25 per gig, but did not stay long. At age 19, Redding met one 5 year old Zelma Atwood at the teenage party. She gave birth to their son Dexter in the summer of 1960 and married Redding in August 1961. In mid-1960, Otis moved to Los Angeles with his sister, Deborah, where he wrote his first songs, including She's Alright, Tough Enough, I'm Getting Hip, and Gamma Lemma. Johnny Jenkins left the band to become the featured artist with the Pin Hoppers. Around this time, Redding met Phil Walden, the future founder of the recording company Phil Walden and Associates, and later Bobby Smith, who ran the small label Confederate Records. He signed with Confederate and recorded his second single, Shout Bam Alema and Fat Girl, together with his band Otis and the Shooters. Stuart signed Redding and released These Arms of Mine with Hey Hey Baby on the B-side. The single was released by Volt in October 1962 and charted in March the following year. It became one of his most successful songs, selling more than 800,000 copies. These Arms of Mine and other songs from the 1962-1963 sessions were included on Redding's debut album, Pain in My Heart. That's What My Heart Needs and Mary's Little Lamb were recorded in June 1963. The latter is the only Redding track with both background singing and brass. It became his worst-selling single. Most of Redding's songs after Security from his first album had a slow tempo. This cocky AC Muha Williams accordingly labeled him Mr. Pitiful and subsequently Proper and Redding wrote the eponymous song. That and top 100 singles, Chained and Bound, Come to Me and That's How Strong My Love Is were included on Redding's second studio album, The Great Otis Redding Sings Soul Ballads, released in March 1965. Jenkins began working independently from the group out of fear Buckin, Walden and Cropper would plagiarize his playing style, and so Cropper became Redding's leading guitarist. In late 1966, Redding returned to the Stax studio and recorded several tracks, including Try a Little Tenderness, written by Jimmy Campbell, Greg Camelli and Harry M. Woods in 1932. Try a Little Tenderness was included on his next album, Complete and Unbelievable, the Otis Redding Dictionary of Soul. The song and the album were critically and commercially successful. The former peaked at number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and at number 4 on the R&B chart. In March 1967, Stax released King and Queen, an album of duets between Redding and Carla Thomas, which became a certified gold record. Three singles were lifted from the album. Tramp was released in April, followed by Knock on Wood and Lovey Dovey. All three reached at least the top 60 on both the R&B and pop charts. The album charted at number 5 and 36 on the Billboard Pop and R&B charts, 
respectively. Reading returned to Europe to perform at the Paris Olympia. The live album Otis Reading. Live in Europe was released three months later, featuring this and other live performances in London and Stockholm, Sweden. Before Monterey, Redding wanted to record with Kim Lee, but Stax was against the idea. The two moved from Memphis to Macon to continue writing. The result was Sweet Soul Music, which peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100. By that time Redding had developed polyps on his larynx, which he tried to treat with tea and lemon or honey. He was hospitalized in September 1967 at Montana Sinai Hospital in New York to undergo surgery. By 1967 the band was traveling to performances in Reading's Beechcraft Take 18. On December 9, 1967, they appeared on the upbeat television show produced in Cleveland. They played three concerts in two nights at a club called Leo's Casino. After a phone call with Zelma and their children, Redding's next stop was Madison, Wisconsin. The next day they were to play at the Factory Night Club, near the University of Wisconsin. Although the weather was poor with heavy rain and fog, and despite warnings, the plane took off. Four miles from their destination at Truex Field in Madison, the pilot radioed for permission to land. Shortly thereafter, the plane crashed into Lake Monona. Bar K's member Ben Colley, the accident's sole survivor, was sleeping shortly before the accident. The other victims of the crash were four members of the Bar K's guitarist Jimmy King, tenor saxophonist Fallon Jones, organist Ronnie Caldwell and drummer Carl Cunningham. Their valet, Matthew Kelly and the pilot, Richard Fraser. Redding's body was recovered the next day when the late bed was searched. The family postponed the funeral from December 15 to December 18 so that more could attend. The service took place at the city auditorium in Macon. More than 4,500 people came to the funeral, overflowing the 3000 seat hall, although many did not know who he was. Connie Jenkins and Isaac Hayes did not attend, fearing their reaction would be worse than Zelma Redding's. Redding was entombed at his ranch in Round Oak, about 20 miles north of Macon. On November 8, 1997, a memorial plaque was placed on the lakeside deck of the Madison Convention Center, Monona Terrace. Artists from many genres have named Redding as a musical influence. George Harrison called, respect, an inspiration for, ride my car. The Rolling Stones also mentioned Redding as a major influence. Other artists influenced by Redding include Led Zeppelin, Grateful Dead, Leonard Skynyrd, The Doors and virtually every soul and R&B musician from the early years, such as Al Green, Etta James, William Bell, Aretha Franklin, Marvin Gaye and Kim Lee. Readers of the British music newspaper Melody Maker voted him the top vocalist of 1967, superseding Elvis Presley, who had topped the list for the prior 10 years. In 1988, he was inducted into the Georgia Music Hall of Fame. Five years later, the United States Post Office issued a 29 9 cent commemorative postage stamp in his honor. Redding was inducted into his own Writers Hall of Fame in 1994 and in 1999 he received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. American music magazine Rolling Stone ranked Redding at number 21 on their list of the 100 greatest artists of all time and 8th on their list of the 100 greatest singers of all time. Q ranked Redding 4th among 100 greatest singers, after only Frank Sinatra, Franklin and Presley. In 2002, the city of Macon honored its native son by unveiling a memorial statue in the city's Gateway Park. The Rhythm and Blues Foundation named Redding as the recipient of its 2006 Pioneer Award. Billboard awarded Redding the Otis Redding Excellence Award the same year. A year later he was inducted into the Hollywood's Rock Walk in California.